Testing, testing, one, two, three. That was really loud. Hi friends, welcome back to Fiona's Universe. Today we are doing a video that I've been wanting to film for at least three years now, and it is my biggest NaNoWriMo tips. If you saw my video last week, I did a NaNoWriMo vlog of the first week of my writing. It was a lot of fun, we had some success, and I would highly recommend you watch that first or after you watch this video because I think it could give you some motivation. Yesterday, I did a poll on my community tab here on YouTube where I asked you guys what you wanted to see from me in next week's video, this week's video, whatever. And the most highly voted one was a NaNoWriMo Tips video, which I was surprised by because it is midway through November and a lot of people probably, if they're doing NaNoWriMo, are already underway with it, just like I am. But honestly, I feel like these tips could be good for any time of year when you're doing a little writing challenge or you're trying to finish a book fast. And also, the latter half of NaNoWriMo is almost always the most challenging in my personal opinion because you really have to stay motivated and on top of everything in order to finish that draft. Another thing I wanted to mention is that I posted a TikTok today that I filmed yesterday before knowing that I was filming this video for this week and I had done some NaNoWriMo tips on little scrolly picture things on TikTok. So if you want a more condensed version of what I'm about to say and talk about, you can look on there. I'm gonna go way beyond it in this video, so don't worry about me being redundant because I would never do that to you guys. That is all I have in terms of an intro for this video, apart from saying that I hope the mic sounds good, as per usual. Always a disclaimer, I was wrong, I have one more thing to say. NaNoWriMo has been under controversy recently, the company because I think it is because they endorsed AI and the use of AI in writing. You guys know me. If you watch even my Redbubble videos, I always talk about how much I don't like AI in terms of creative writing and creative projects and in school. So you know my stance on this. I still use NaNoWriMo. I have done it for the past four years since I was 15 as my November writing challenge. I use it outside of November to track my progress. It is what I'm comfortable with. It is what I use. But with that being said, if you have other resources you like to use please let me know in the comments down below this is just what i'm used to okay can't teach an old dog new tricks except for i'm young and not a dog let's begin with my biggest tip for NaNoWriMo and for writing in general to finish a project all right that would be you have to be extremely incredibly passionate about whatever it is you are writing so, if you have a project that has been simmering on your shelf for a year and you have no desire in your heart to pick it back up, perhaps that's not a NaNoWriMo project. I know it's easier said than done, especially because, again, I do encourage people not to go into NaNoWriMo blind with a blank page on their computer because that can be really hard. We'll get into it later. I also don't think you should be going into a whip or a project that has been sitting for a while because you are likely not super motivated to be doing that project. When I say incredibly passionate, I mean like thinking about it outside of writing time. I mean dreaming about it literally or figuratively. I mean thinking about your characters and the conversations they would be having, jotting stuff down in notes apps, making Spotify playlists, Pinterest boards, and obsessively sort of immersing yourself into this world. I know not everybody is me and not everybody wants to make this their life. They just want to write a book maybe for fun or for a hobby. But again, I still think you need to have a lot, a lot of passion and a lot of motivation for the project itself in order to see it through, especially in such a short amount of time when you're going to have to be dedicating days and days and days consecutively to working on it. You might be thinking, Fiona, how do I do this? How do I make myself fall in love with my project again or even more in order for me to really see it through and be excited to write it every day? My biggest tip for this will always be make sure that there is something in every single chapter that you are excited and cannot wait to write. This can be an interaction between the love interests, maybe a spicy piece of dialogue or a scene if you get what i'm talking about 
and maybe like a fight scene or an argument anything along those lines that gets you really going for me it's any romantic interaction or just like a pivotal plot point can also be really really fun and get you excited to jump into writing for the day this is one of my biggest writing tips of all time even if you are not a plotter and you're more of a pantser which we will get into i think that you need to know the beginning middle and end of every chapter you're walking into so even if you're going into it without a chapter outline i go into it with a chapter outline most of the time you need to know not just oh in this chapter this person is having a conversation with this person about this thing how is the chapter going to end so that you can push through it get to that accomplishment that is useful to your plot might i add and eventually just be satisfied with the outcome that you're left with i actually discovered that this is a really good tip for me by not doing that and i would just go in with oh this scene's about this how does it end what is the ending is there a dramatic moment is there dramatic dialogue is there something that they find out it has to have an ending in order to have a meaning one more quick tip about chapters or scenes is that if you are stuck on a specific chapter or scene one of two things can be helpful to you this goes for all writing not just NaNoWriMo again I'm gonna generalize a little bit but for me if I can't stand the thought of writing a scene as long as it's not crucial to the plot take it out if you can't stand to write it people are not gonna want to read it and I know some scenes are more challenging than others but again really critically think about if it is important and then secondly if you are having trouble with the scene because of the challenge of writing it like maybe it's a fight scene and you don't feel really prepared to encounter that on the day of your challenge you can skip it go back to it after NaNoWriMo during NaNoWriMo whenever you want you don't have to write your book chronologically although I personally find it helpful to do so but again I'm not immune to skipping a chapter or scene because I don't know how to write it there's no shame in that there's no harm in that I suppose let's get into the infamous prepping versus pantsing discussion I do not claim to be either because I think it's kind of silly to establish yourself like that to be honest like uh, no but I find that a lot of beginner writers they think that they can pants a book <laughs> Honestly, I don't think anybody can successfully pants a book 100% because it's a story. It has to have certain crucial elements to it. If you've ever successfully pants an entire book, good for you. But I think for NaNoWriMo at least, prepping appropriately is necessary in your success. I know that not everybody likes to do intricate chapter outlines. I don't do intricate chapter outlines. I don't even have all my chapters planned for the book I'm working on for NaNoWriMo. I do, however, have at least 10, 15 chapters, and I know the beginning, middle, and the end of my book, as well as several hundred scenes that are going to be happening throughout. Ideas are your best friend, okay? So even if you don't like chapter outlines, ideas chronologically in a list on a document going to change your life, I promise you. Like I said, going into any book, any project, any challenge like NaNoWriMo with a blank document is going to be daunting and it's kind of dumb in my opinion. Extremely dumb because you're setting yourself up for failure. I hope I'm not being too mean. I never claim to be nice. I'm a nice girl, but when it comes to writing, I have opinions and I'm going to share them with you because that's why you're here. Let's go back to a previous thing I had mentioned and that is you don't have to start a completely new project from chapter one. In fact, I've never done this in all four times of doing NaNoWriMo. I have at least 10,000 words, a chapter, anything. Because personally, I find that the beginning of books is the most fun, but also the most challenging in terms of pushing it out. Once you're in the middle, I can just fly through it. But the beginning, I like to have established before going into a challenge like this. That might just be a personal preference, but it has worked for me countless times. So again, you can start a whip. You don't have to be looking at something brand new. Something that you've been ruminating on, not for too long, but something that you are, you know, 
really excited to continue working on. For NaNoWriMo can be a great way to start. This next one is actually really helpful and I think it's also it's a struggle that a lot of us tend to have with NaNoWriMo and it's that I recommend you don't obsessively check your word count, although it is very tempting to do so when it's such a word-based challenge. You know, you want to be getting that 1600 words or whatever you have made your goal for the month every single day. So, again, every little sprint you do, every scene you write, you don't have to be checking it. You don't have to be checking it every 30 seconds. In fact, please don't because you might feel discouraged if it's not as high as you thought. Or if you're inputting words every five minutes into the NaNoWriMo site, you're not writing. So try not to focus too much on the count and really immerse yourself in the story and the words will come and you will be finished for the day before you even know it. Trust me, that feeling is incredible. This next one I think nobody ever really talks about. Although I've never heard anyone talk about any of this stuff, but I just feel like it's more of a less common thing that I hear with this tip. And that is, I don't think we should be lowering the quality of our writing for NaNoWriMo or a other writing challenge where we're trying to get stuff down on the page. I'm personally not a believer in drafts. I think that, yes, obviously, when you publish a book, it goes through several, several rounds of revision and becomes a different project every time. But the whole zero draft, first draft, that can just be a complete disaster mess. Personally, that gives me the ick, and it makes me feel like people are just throwing crap to the wind, and they're going to be going into their second round of revisions feeling lost. That was harsh. I'm sorry. Again, everyone's writing process is different, so I'm not judging anybody, but I personally think that once you're finished NaNoWriMo, yay, you're going to be on a high, you're going to be so excited. When you eventually, a few months later, a few weeks later, go to edit that project, because that exists, you're not going to want to be looking at a bunch of nonsense that you just wrote for the sake of getting words down on the page. So don't lower the quality of your writing to the point where you're never going to want to revise it, okay? No matter if you do drafts or whatever, I think that we should always just be trying to do our best, okay? I really like this next one. I feel like it's very personal. It Jeez, Fiona, it's very personal and customizable to your own lifestyle and personality. And it is to keep track of your words in whatever way feels most exciting and motivating to you. Obviously, I recommend putting it into some sort of system, even if you don't use NaNoWriMo to actually literally keep track of your words. But also, it can be fun to maybe journal about it, right? a new page for each milestone you hit or update your social media accounts if that's something that you do like I do when you hit a milestone for example yesterday I posted when I hit 50,000 words on my story it's just a good way to keep track and motivate yourself and then also if you don't have any of those little outlets that you like to use just sharing with a family member or a loved one a friend that oh I hit 10,000 words today oh I wrote a really cool scene today about this. I always do that with my friend Fena. I just send her like a picture of my computer screen and she's very motivating for me as well. So thanks Fena. I love you. Literally look at her um, at the beginning of November trying to make me do NaNoWriMo for the fourth time. I love you. This next one people might take wrong. So listen to my words very carefully. You don't have to hold yourself to a specific word count every day. I do think however you should specifically hold yourself to the word count that NaNoWriMo provides for you if that's what you're doing like the 1600 words I do recommend you do it every day unless something critical happens where you can't write that day I mean more so that you can surpass it you can finish the count before the end of NaNoWriMo and that's something that I really didn't get through my head in the first year that I did it when I was 15 or 16 I would stop immediately cut myself off once I hit my count for the day. That's like really demotivating. If you're in the middle of a scene, push through it and get have fun with it. Finish it off. You don't have to finish it just because you've hit your count for the day. And that goes for outside of NaNoWriMo. If you want to write a, a thousand words a day, but you're on a really good roll with it, keep going. You will be glad that you did, I promise. This is something that I think I've already said in this video, but along the lines of not 
picking up a project that you've had sitting forever for NaNoWriMo, after NaNoWriMo, which is appropriate to which is appropriate to the time we're in right now, where it's nearing sort of the, the end, don't let the book that you successfully write for NaNoWriMo sit forever for the foreseeable future. Because yes, it was a great experience. Any writing experience is good to your personal growth and skill development. But if you do want to pursue that book, don't let it sit forever and ever just because it was NaNoWriMo and you really had to pump it out in a month because I know it can be exhausting. I recommend waiting like a month at the most to give it a read. I would say a week at the very least just to cleanse yourself of that intense experience that you had with NaNoWriMo. But if you do want to revise, just do it. Just do it. Trust me. Do it one chapter a day. You'll be all set. Again, like with all of these tips, maybe your personal preference is different. Maybe you like to wait a year before editing your books. I don't recommend that personally because for me, I don't like doing that. It's never successful. But again, you take everything here with a grain of salt, okay? This is my button, by the way. If you see I'm holding something, it's my clicker. So I'm sorry. It's like attached to my hand at this point when I film videos. So if I'm waving it around... Try not to get too distracted, okay? This is gonna be the last tip that I give because I have a lot of notes around me right now. I have my iPad, my notebook, and my computer all full of notes that I've taken over the years for NaNoWriMo tips. This one just ruminates in my mind. I feel like I've said ruminates a lot in this video. I'm really sorry. And just like that, I forgot what the tip is. I remembered. Okay, this is a common theme that I see with writers, beginner writers writers in general. I don't have time to write. I'm a full-time student. I don't have time to do NaNoWriMo. I don't have time to write. I'm too busy. Hello? You have time to be scrolling on TikTok at the end of the day? You have time to listen to your tunes on Spotify? I certainly hope you have time to talk to your family and friends. If writing is only a hobby for you and something you, you do for fun and enjoyment, you do have time to do it, I promise you. Unless you are working 12 hours a day and then immediately going to bed when you get home, which don't do NaNoWriMo if you're doing that. That sounds really stressful, girl, I'm sorry. I've been there, I've been there. I think that you have time to write as long as you're not in that situation. If writing is something that you're serious about, you wanna get this book done, you wanna get 50,000 words or whatever done in November, you will find the time. I promise you. I promise you. Even last week, on Tuesday, my cat got really, really sick. My baby Jude. And I had to take her to the vet in an Uber. And I'm a small town girl. I don't do Uber. I don't do vet. I don't do adulting. So I was really stressed. I had a really hard day. Not to mention my cat was sick. And I was like, I can't do NaNoWriMo today. I did it. And guess what? It made me feel a whole lot better. So... It's possible. I'm a full-time university student in second year, studying English. I have countless essays to do. I just submitted one before filming this video. It is possible. I promise you it is possible. There have been days in high school when I would go to school all day. I would wake up at 5.45, go to band, go to school all day, come home, go to work at 4.30, work till 10.30, come home, do my NaNoWriMo. It is possible. I used to do it on the school bus in high school. I would write it in my notes app on the school bus. You don't need Wi-Fi for a notes app. I promise you, the harder you work at it and the more you push through your obstacles, the more rewarding it will feel when you finally hit that word count and get the confetti that NaNoWriMo gives you when you successfully win the challenge. Hello? Sorry, my, my clicker, my prized clicker that I love so much wasn't working. <laughs> with all of that being said i think we can begin to wrap up this video you know i like to talk at the end of my videos so if you don't want to hear me yap about certain things i wish you a wonderful day happy writing and i love you if you're still here hi i love you i wanted to mention that on my poll i had two other ideas i did a total of three this one was the most popular as of the day i'm filming this by a lot but the other two were reading my old fan fictions episode one 
I love that idea. And then also talking to my characters on character AI. Are you kidding me? That sounds like so much fun. I was shocked that this one won, but I've been wanting to do this video forever, so no complaints from me. Again, if you're interested in watching those videos, they're going to be coming out, like, next two or three weeks. So, stay tuned. If those were the ones that you picked, do not fear. I am also going to be vlogging the end of my NaNoWriMo. So, I did the first week vlogged, and then I'm going to do the end of me hitting my word count goal and wrapping everything up, probably also finishing the book project slash slash below. So if you're interested in hearing and witnessing me finish a book, my 11th or 12th book, make sure to watch that vlog when it comes out. Might I also add that vlogging the first week of NaNoWriMo for me was extremely motivating. Nobody really vlogs, like a very niche amount of people vlog, but like that is something that you could try even if it's just for yourself. I did it last year, didn't post it, did it for myself it was helpful. It's helpful. I promise. I also post live updates on my Instagram, specifically my writing Instagram, my author Instagram. I don't know what to call it, but when I hit like milestones and stuff, I update you and it's just a fun time over there where you can explore my projects and some of my deep inner monologue that I post from my notes app. I'll also likely be doing a post on my main account for NaNoWriMo and if I succeed, which we are all hoping and praying for collectively for each other, right? And so if you want to see that and many other things that I post over there, you can check it out. I highly recommend. I also have a Pinterest account. I also have a TikTok where I post about NaNoWriMo and all my projects and writing tips, writing tip of the day. So if you want to hear more about all of my writing tips, not just for NaNoWriMo, check it out over there. For reference, basically all my social media accounts are xoxo fiona777 or fionas.universe. So, if you're looking on any app for me, that's probably two good things that you can search. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Genuinely, I have been blown away by the growth on my channel. Though small, it's huge to me because I put off filming and uploading for a long time claiming that I was too busy. It's a Saturday. What else am I going to be doing right now? I submitted all my schoolwork. This is my dream. This is my goal. This is what I want to do for my career. So again, thank you so much for supporting this journey from me. I hope that I can help you along your writing journey, your social media journey, and just to bring some joy to your day. You guys genuinely bring so much joy to my day. So I want to make sure I'm giving back to you at all times. Maybe someday I'll do a giveaway. Okay? That would be so fun. Imagine I published a book and like I could make a giveaway package with like themed merch and stuff because I know how to do that. Redbubble, hello? That's like my other thing. That would be so cool. That would be so cool. In other ways though, I will always answer your comments, your questions, anything. I am collecting questions for Q&A, my TikTok, my Instagram, and on here. So the video will be uploaded eventually. Any question you have for me, life, writing, books, my books please let me know and I will always answer you. I love chatting in the comments section. You can also let me know down below if you are doing NaNoWriMo, if you ever have done NaNoWriMo, or just about what book you are currently working on or even just reading because a lot of people on here I know aren't necessarily writers and that's totally fine. I just finished a book yesterday in one sitting. It's called Phantasma. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Tell me what's up in the comments. I love you. You're my besties. With all of that being said, I'm going to do my NaNoWriMo right now. So I will talk to you guys later. Happy writing. I love you.